Hello. I've just come back out to the garage to undo the second bank of studs, hopefully, hope, you know, fingers crossed. Um, so let's get on with it. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Might as well just start at the top. I'm going to use the same method as before. Just get a, get like a measure of it there. So what I've been doing is putting a bit of load on like that. Then giving it a couple of hits with the load on. And you can feel it go. It, it went then. That, that works well actually. Have the torque on and give it a couple of, couple of hits while you're torquing it. I wonder if that might be an idea to actually do the loosening of them all and then just come back with a ratchet and get them all with the... Do you think I'm being a bit... making assumptions there that it's going to actually work? Right, so I've done that one, didn't I? I thought it went then, but it, it, I don't think it did. So again, I'll put torque on. One's gone as well. Oh, that, I might not be able to do that because it's going to be in the way, isn't it? This one's a bit corroded at this end. I think that's going. Let's get those three out then. This is a better way of working because you're putting the loads kind of downwards. When I was doing it, when I very first started, I was pushing the trolley all around the floor. What I did was put some tension on, like that, and then start hitting it.
and then give it a bit of a go. So this is this is much better. So there's a handy hint for you. The other handy end is try not to put your fingers between the tool and the adjacent stud. Problem is when the load isn't very high, like that, the tool comes off. There we go, can you see? Nice. Not much damage to the stud, that'll just file up. Those threads will clean up and that's reusable. I'll tell you what, ARP don't make much money out of me. This one feels like it's going a bit tight, so I'm going to do what I did before and wind it back in. You have to flip that round to the other side like that. So I'm going to get it halfway like that, put a bit more um, bit of this on it, I need to make some more up. So let's try this one. I think the secret is to be patient basically, don't expect everything to just come whistling out and this is one of those jobs where you you have to develop a feel for things you if you ain't got that touch that feel you got no chance Knowing when to stop trying to do something is the secret. But certainly, I found when I was putting that torque on the torque on the bar and on those Stilsons, when I hit it with the hammer, you can see it in the video. It goes. Like that, you can see it start to go round. Now that's obviously quite easy there because that was within the realms that I've already moved it. And that's about probably where it started going tight. But that feels alright now this time round. It's nice having a big long ratchet like that better than you know having to reposition it every time plus you only put one mark on the 
a stud. Well, depending on how many times you put the tool on and off. This is what we want. See, there's the corrosion on the end there because it's been in the water jacket. Right. If you watch, I'm putting this on a specific way around, I'm putting it on like that. So I can, if I put it on like that, you see, I wouldn't be able to get the hammer on the stud, but I'm putting it like that. So it's, the hole is above. And then I can put this on like that and hit it. But I'm going to hit it, give it a preliminary hit first. I didn't go too mad with those because I'm aware of the fragility of this area on the deck. You know what I mean? You can't go hitting it with a sledgehammer or something like that. Right, where's my tube? What I've been doing is kind of pulling on it, but if I get to a certain torque and it hasn't gone, I'll start hitting it. Yeah, I, think I can feel it go there. I don't know if you can pick it up on the video, but as I started hitting it, it you know, I held the, the torque constant and then it went. Definitely hitting it while you're trying to torque it is a good thing. So I'm putting the load on. Not sure if that's, yeah, that's actually going. Yeah, that's going. That one just went. That one's just gone as well. Blimey. I think I'd better uh, buy a lottery ticket, I don't know. Can you see how untidy my, de my bench is? Probably off the camera there, but I am a messy worker. Mainly because I get kind of wrapped up in what I'm doing and constantly thinking about what I'm doing and what's about to go wrong and as soon as I finish one job I never tidy up I just launch into the next phase because I don't know if that's going to work so I don't know if what I'm going to do is going to work so I want to see if what I'm going to try will work you know I'll just constantly trying different things. See what I did just notice that I can't get this puller to do a full turn on that stud down there. That one. Or you know any of them. That's nice look, that's good isn't it? Reusable. Like I say it's amazing what you can do when your standards are low. This one um, just came loose, didn't it? It didn't need hitting. Well, hitting while I was talking it. I 
I want to get these out this afternoon because I wouldn't be able to, because I live, you know, in a suburban street, I wouldn't be able to hammer like that late in the evening. I try and sort of have a nine o'clock curfew for um, hammering and grinding, just out of respect for the neighbours, really. If I want to do anything later than that, I um, tend to, uh, you know, try and pick quieter jobs. But to be honest, because I retired last um, at the end of last March, I tend not to work so much in the evening because I don't I don't need to. I can come out in the day. So what I might do here then, I might try that other tool on this one. Like I say, it's actually 11 millimeters, so it's a bit, and I don't want to put it on. I want to get it down past the threads. You see how far it goes round before it grips? Yeah, that's all right, that is. Trouble is, you have to go and put it in the vise to get it off. Well, that's not much of a hardship though, is it, doing that, so... Fair enough. I mean, would you say there's any any um, penetrating oil or anything on them threads? I wouldn't really, would you? I'll tell you what you can see on that. I can see it. don't know if you can see it. You can see little shiny bits at the bottom of the thread. That shows how undersized these holes are. I'll just go and get this out of here. Now, you hear it mentioned on various forums, but if anybody's watching this that isn't on a forum, you mustn't put a tap through these holes. These holes are machined tighter than normal, so that when these threads go in, it's less likely to leak. If you run a tap up and down all the holes, which is very tempting to do, you will in increase the chance of everything leaking. and repeat, hopefully. Yeah, that's just gone easily. I'll start up here because this stud here is in the way. With that one out of the way, these this tool clears these two, so it's definitely easier working on the other side of the motor. I noticed actually on a lot of them um sort of archive footage from the Ford factory that they used to assemble these motors up on end.
Oh, I might get some, will That's a bit gun on the end there, look. Probably still be serviceable there. Let's see if I can just um, see if these will just do it when it's, once it comes more easy, like that. Nice one. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Nearly halfway. I don't know how hard you can hit those. Do you know what I mean? Well, I can't really think what I'm trying to say. I don't know how hard you would have to hit those to damage the block, is what I'm trying to say. Hopefully harder than that. That's just gone. Bloody hell, I'm lucky today, aren't I? Okay. I don't imagine I'm going to get that lucky on all of them. That's just gone. That's just gone. Sorry if I'm in the way. That's quite tight, I'll hit that one. I think I can feel it going, but you know, I don't want to push my luck. If it falls, I'm, if it breaks, I'm going to fall over on my back. Well, it's gone, so that's good. Be best to undo these ones first to get better access for that one. I don't tend to use this um, torque wrench. Because it's got some weird sort of markings on it, I can never work out what it is, so I use use a different one. But sometimes what I'll do is use the other one to set this one up, and then I'll um, use this one because it's nice sometimes having the ratchet, isn't it? If I do it like this, I can reach there with my left hand. That's going. I was looking right down on the stem of the valve, uh, the stem of the uh, thing there. I saw it moving. These roadsters make a good workbench. Yeah, that's gone nice and easy. Yeah, that one's gone as well. I'm sure hitting them with a hammer helps. That one's gone.
they still take a bit of winding, you know, they're by no means loose. That's in good condition. I think if you, um, you know, do a number of studs with the same operation and then switch to the next bit of tooling and do the same number with the other bit of tooling, it's a bit more efficient, isn't it? Because you're not swapping back and forth on the tooling all the time. Just make sure you remember which ones you've loosened already. Okay, good. Let's not um, count our chickens yet. Is that the right expression? Right, this... Whoops, <laughs> wrong hammer. This is, this is what I've been doing, is basically put this on, put, in a, put a certain amount of torque on. And if it goes, it goes. If it don't go, I hit it with a hammer. And that did just go. I'm looking at it really carefully. There, that's it. They are all taking roughly the same amount of torque. But I'm amazed at how well these studs have come out, to be honest, knowing what a nightmare they can be. camera went off because I forgot that I'd unplug the charger thing. I don't know how many you missed and what little pearls of wisdom you may have missed. That's gone quite easily actually. This uh, roller box. This is 11 millimeters, so it's a little bit snug on a. Seven sixteenths. But it's easier to use on this one because of the proximity to those two. Suddenly goes, I'll hit myself on the head. Oh, this gun. I think all the bumping and banging, all the hammering, has like a cumulative effect on all the other ones. Maybe, don't know. I'm going to assume that these are all just going to come undone. Yeah, that's gone. It's a very kind of tactile thing. Yeah, that went. I am a very, very lucky fellow. He says, you know, hang on. That's gone ever so easy. Right, come on, bring it on. Oh, bloody torque wrenches fell apart again. Lots of opportunities to catch your fingers in this. You 
See what I did then? I put it opposite so it shortened the stroke so it would do a clean swing there. So. Just take quite a wind on this short ratchet. Numero, I don't know what number it is to be honest, last but one. Is this going to be a tada moment? Or is this a, from your point of view, oh shit, Mark didn't break anything. That was boring. Ta -da. <laughs> oh god. I forgot the ta-da there, didn't I? Ta-da. The lovely, lovely sound of studs, not in an engine. It's oily, isn't it, now? Okay, so there we are, all the studs are out. That went better than I expected to be honest. I didn't expect to be able to just basically take them all out. But you could see that I was being very careful and cautious and um, applying moderate strength, moderate torque. Uh, never just expecting them to come out and just winding away like Billio, or smashing them to bits with the hammer. Nine, you know, ninety percent of them will be reusable. So there's the um, engine. So once again, thank you very much for popping in. Thanks for joining me in my garage. Thanks for keeping me company. And as always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot then. Bye.